In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing an electric bike with an absolute monster range claim. Now, I've seen other bikes that claim 100 miles of range, but this one might actually be able to do it with its 48 volt, 60 amp hour battery pack. Now, typically a long range e-bike will have a 20 amp hour battery pack. The battery pack on this bike is over three times that capacity. And get this, it's under $2,000 at the time of this recording. Of course, check the link below on current pricing. But the big question is, does this electric bike live up to the hype or not? Today, we're gonna find out. <laughs> oh, get out of there. <laughs> Dude, this bike is so heavy. I don't even wanna touch this box. Oh my goodness. Come out and play. Come on, come on, come on. We've gotta get into that battery. Dang. That, that, that is a big battery. Please handle the battery carefully. You must put your battery flat. Do not place vertically. Interesting. Do not touch the charging port with metal objects. That is not our normal looking charger. And there is a lock and unlock over here on the other side. So we really need to get to the keys. What's in these two boxes? Cool looking headlight, pretty typical. Pedals, I don't know if we're gonna be using these or not. But this, this we will be using. Check out the size of this charger. Holy. All right, it's got a fan. Lithium ion battery charger. What's the specs? Eight amp charger. This is the big boy to go with the big boy. That takes 7.5 hours to charge this thing from empty to full. Really not bad considering how big that battery is. Manual. All right, keys weren't in there. That probably means they're gonna be over here. Oh yeah, there they are. Check it out. Look at this throttle, full twist throttle. I hope this thing has pretty good, uh, pretty good feedback and uh, sensitivity. Some of these switches kind of work like on off switches. I'm really hoping this one doesn't. Seven gears, we'll take a look at this stuff later. But check this out, there's keys, two keys, and also two of these guys. This is an NFC chip to unlock the bike. Okay, we're gonna try and follow the rules here. Dude, this battery. <laughs> oh my goodness. See if I can, oh. <laughs> All right, it says not to put it like this way. There it is. It's listed as 60,000 milliamp hours. 48 volt, 2880 watt hours, almost 3K watt hours. Massive, massive. I gotta weigh this thing. Let's see how full it is when they ship it. Oh, nice, it's mostly charged. And check out the connector. It's uh, not normal. Plug that in. Dude, this battery is so big, I feel like running the normal tail happy circuit to review this bike wouldn't even be adequate. So I don't, I might, I might run this thing out to the Hollywood sign. Even still, I think that would be easy for this bike. I've been thinking about doing like an extreme range test, you know, like 100 mile ride or something on this bike drop a comment if you if you want to see something like that plug this thing in there it goes charging got the fan running kind of a short cable obviously one of the downsides to a big battery is weight so how much does this thing weigh Whoa. That's 24.4 on this scale. I don't know if that's right or not. So typically, you know, the batteries weigh in the ballpark of like 10 pounds. So if you don't need the range, if you don't want big range, you don't really want to be carrying around this extra weight. Other than just range, another thing you can use that big battery pack for is running high power for a long time. So this is a 750 watt hub motor. I think it was listed as a 25 amp controller. So you could run this thing at max speed probably for like, I don't know, we'll find out. Everybody knows speed kills range, but with a huge battery pack, you know, might be good. All right, what else we got going on? These brake rotors, man. These are not the typical kind of rotors you would see on a bicycle. They are big slotted rotors. It looks like they're listed as three millimeters thick. And I mean, just looking at the edge of that rotor, I can see it's thicker than a normal bike rotor. And it makes sense with all that extra weight from the battery pack and everything, you're gonna need rotors that can absorb more heat. I just can't get over the battery. Look at the size of that tray, man. That's huge and then of course this is the aq177 pro max like the step through variation they also have the a8 very similar not exactly the same but pretty similar you can check out the website link below i almost got the a8 so this one has a uh, full suspension which i mean you're gonna want that on, on a moped style bike like this i mean is this considered moped style so we'll feel this out when we actually get out on the road and see you know is the suspension feel any good or not but also cargo so it's got this rack, metal rack. Um, I'd imagine you'd probably wanna carry something around on a big bike like this, which is why I give you this passenger seat. We'll put that on in a bit. Seems like a little bit of an afterthought, but I'm sure it's fine. Fenders are plastic. Typical seven gears on the Shimano gear set. 
attorney derailleur. Here's a look at the swing arm and the chain ring. I like the message. Enjoy life, ride mocos? Sure, I'm down. What are we working with here? Better be good. We could be on this for a while. So here's what the seat looks like. It's wide. Uh, definitely looks like it'll be comfortable. Well, here's the shape just so you can see it. In case you care. Also has a quick release lever and seat post. Get about that much travel in the seat post. Check out the front suspension. Branded Anioki with a basic lock and unlock adjustment. So there will be a lot of weight sitting up on that suspension. We'll see how this bike rides. The placement of the battery always makes a difference. This one has, you know, obviously the huge battery sitting kind of more towards the front of the bike. You know, I've reviewed a lot of bikes and it, you know, makes a difference where the battery is located. Some of them, they'll put the battery behind the seat. Let's we'll have to feel it out. Here's what the handlebar shape looks like. Interesting, these holes are just kind of open down here. And as you probably noticed, they are 20 inch tall wheels, knobby tread pattern on the four inch wide tire, fat tires. Kind of feel like a street tire might be better for this kind of setup. You can always change that on your own. But these 20 inch wheels compared to like a 26 inch wheel, these will accelerate better, feel a lot more nimble. Gotta throw this front wheel on. There is no quick release on the front wheel. Pedals come packed with $100 playing cards between them. Here's what the pedals look like. Here's what the headlight looks like. Almost, come on now. Okay, so this isn't a huge deal, but there's a few things I notice here. One, it's not adjustable. Like you can't turn the headlight up and down at all. This headlight, you know, I've seen this headlight on other bikes. It has these little like bolts on the side. Typically what happens is this bolts onto a uh, dual crown suspension fork. It clamps onto this part up here. That doesn't exist on this bike, uh, so it just, it's, it's stuck in one place. And then this is very minor detail. It's just very difficult to put this on and get it on tight. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I just, I can't get any tighter than that and it might rotate on me. Eddie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Eddie? You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth bicycle. <laughs> Nailed it. But because there is no dual crown fork, you can turn the wheel very far. And let's take a look at the cockpit display. Power that up in just a moment. On the left side, we get a relatively thick rubber round grip. I like it. Turn signals, horn, try it in a moment. Pedal assist, power, info, light. On the right, we get our basic seven speed Shimano shifter and full twist throttle. DY Island hydraulic brake levers. They seem just fine. And speaking of hydraulic brakes, here are the hydraulic calipers. The pads look a little bit more beefy than usual. You get the same exact thing on the back. Here's what the calipers look like. Yeah, this thing, see what it feels like. Suspension seems like there's not a ton of travel. Time has come. I'm going to load this battery in. In case you didn't know, do not touch the charger port with metal objects. Let's give it a try. Power it up. Hold it down for a sec. All right, so pretty basic display. Tab on through the options here. Oh wait, is it asking for like a password or something? Oh, I need to probably get the uh, NFC, I think. Let's try the NFC. How to? Nice, so yeah, there we go. NFC chip unlocks it. Now what do we get here? Let's tap through the menus. Press info button, okay. So battery voltage is uh, 53.6, so it gives you battery voltage, awesome. Miles, uh, mile, max speed, hour speed, amp hours, or AH. Not sure what that one is. Yeah, pretty loud, pretty loud. <laughs> and then pedal assist modes, you can have zero, all the way up to five. We'll check the uh, menus and see what else we can do. So I like that it gives you your battery voltage in terms of a bar, but more importantly, it gives you the voltage of the battery. So you get a very precise understanding of what's going on there. On a 48 volt battery, 54 volts is pretty much fully charged. So I can tell this bike's got a little bit of weight to it. Here's what the light looks like. Headlight has a basic on off, no halo light or anything fancy. And here's what it looks like brightness wise. Pretty bright, can't adjust if it goes up or down. And then here's the tail light. Looks pretty cool. Does it work as a brake light? Yes. And it also has turn signals. Turn signals are for the back, nothing on front. Put it on pedal assist five and rev it up a bit. Seems pretty legit. It'll go to 32, gets up there pretty quickly. So it seems like it'll have pretty decent power and torque. Tires call for 20 PSI. They're actually set to 42 out of the box. That's way too much air. Now it's too little. 
set them to 17. Holy smokes. Same exact thing on front. Let's get out there and try it. All right, let's rock and roll. We'll bring the manual along so we can change some of the settings, maybe increase the top speed. We'll see. So we know this bike's gonna have monster range. Unlock. There we go. But how does it ride? Would you actually want to be on this thing for a long time? We'll find out today. Of course, we'll start the Strava, see what kind of range we get. And of course we are starting on a absolute full charge of 54.3 volts. That is the max for 48 volt system. It does appear this bike will be offered in 52 volts as well. That should give you a little extra pep in terms of speed and power, and also a little bit overall more range. And if you're thinking about getting the AQ177, obviously you're probably thinking about the A8 as well. So we'll talk about that in a few. So let's go ahead and try the 20% hill grade test with the AQ177 on full blast. Crank it up to pedal assist five here. Now this is a 25 amp controller on this bike, 1200 watts output, but it According to the specs, it weighs 112 pounds and I weigh 200 pounds. So can it conquer a steep hill? From a stop, full throttle, ready, go. 200 pounds and what kind of torque are we working with? I got a Range Rover coming up behind me here. Uh, we're making it up. We're making it up without pedaling at all. Just barely. So pretty decent torque. Whoop, Range Rover's just barely making it up this hill. So let's try that again with a bit of a rollout and we'll look at the current here. Pedal assist five, ready, go. Getting, so it shows you the amps, 25 amps, 22 amps, 20 amps, 19 amps. So as it slows down, it reduces the current. Bit of a lag on the throttle I can see already. Not bad. But, and going down this hill, man, you can feel this thing has some weight to it. So let's give it a little bit of uh, pedaling now. Uh, we'll put it on gear one. I noticed the gears are a little bit out of alignment, out of the box. So I'm just going to hold it in one. But yeah, this thing can just smash right up this 20% grade for a short while there. And welcome to a beautiful day here in Southern California. So in this bright sunshine, the very first thing I'm noticing about this bike is I can like not read this screen hardly at all. It is very... I can hardly see it. I'm guessing it's going to be the same for you guys. So first thing we're going to do is just throw this on pedal assist zero. No throttle works at all on pedal assist zero. Throttle uh, does work on pedal assist one. Brings us up to five miles an hour. I personally like this because it gives you like essentially five levels of cruise control. And the next thing I'm noticing is if you hold the throttle for about three seconds. No, it didn't do it. I thought cruise control actually did kick on. Let's try pedal assist too. 12. And yeah, I let off the throttle and it's just cruise controlling me at 12 miles an hour. So like if you hold the throttle for, I don't know, five seconds. So with it on cruise control on two, let's see, let's see what happens if we press pedal assist three. All right, so nothing. Let's give us some throttle. Where does pedal assist three take us up to? Uh, 18 out of the box settings. And pedal assist four, 25 amps on the controller bringing us up to 24.5. And now pedal assist five, throttle only. Should take us up to max. I don't know if I should go flying into this first turn. You can tell this thing has, has some mass to it. Now acceleration doesn't feel super zippy because you know, it's carrying a lot of weight. And I've got to say, the, the front end seems to kind of be bouncing around a little bit here. We're going into a pretty decent headwind. It's bringing us up to, well, we're on cruise control. 28 miles an hour is showing. We'll get out the GPS, 29. Oh yeah, these brakes, we gotta bed these brakes in. I'm really excited for how much battery we have in this bike. This is just bonkers, man. 60 amp hours, that's, that's almost three kilowatt hours. It's just insane. I threw the seat on the back. Now, one difference between the a8 and the AQ177 is the rear suspension on the A8 is adjustable. It's not adjustable on the AQ177. And then also one of the big differences is uh, the A8 has a 28 amp controller. So you're getting three more amps than what's on this controller. Basically, that's just gonna give you a little more pep, a little more uh, wattage. 1400 watts instead of 1200 watts. So what's it like to pedal? So, you know, we have the seven speed shifter. Uh, let's bring it down a little bit here. Gears are slightly out of alignment, out of the box. Not a big deal. You just adjust the barrel adjusters. Uh, yeah, just the typical seven speed shifters. You can really feel the weight of that battery up here going through the turns. I'd say you run out of gear at about 24-ish. If you need the long range, this is probably an excellent option. 
but I wouldn't just buy this battery if you don't plan on really utilizing all the all the extent of that range out of this battery because you'll just be carrying a lot of extra weight around let's try this thing off road a little bit it is full suspension it feels pretty cushy riding through this not too bad at all really Woo! that suspension might have bottomed out there i heard a clink so it is open there's no adjustments on the front it's just either open or closed let's get out here on the road we got our own lane today nice so i can see this being like a really good like delivery driver kind of uh you know door dasher e-bike something like that it's fast enough to like keep up with this car ah get a little bit of pedal in here yeah you run out of gear for sure it could benefit from another gear too but it's showing 29 29 up here 29.3 flip our turn signal on here see if people can see us merging over you know don't forget to turn that signal off. It doesn't give you any notification up here or any sort of sound or anything indicating that the signal's on. So I am noticing this, uh, the front um, suspension and steering does have like a little bit of like a, a wiggle to it. I don't know if that's just my bike or what. It's not like a problem, just something, you know, I'm kind of noticing as a bike reviewer. You can see it's got like a little speed wobble action going on here. I think this thing could literally probably go from Los Angeles to Mexico on one charge. So it does have 1200 watts. Let's do zero to 20 acceleration, or actually just zero to top speed. See what it can do according to GPS and on board. I weigh 200 pounds. It's carrying a lot of weight despite its wattage. Ready, go. Twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen twenty twenty two. 25 and we'll have the light off for now uh you know decent acceleration it's not like thrilling or anything it's just carrying a lot of weight but you know if you want like a peppy like this one this one is kind of more like a suv and i'm not talking about a lamborghini urus <laughs> so speaking on the seat on this bike I like the seat, it's uh, comfortable. One significant thing I did notice about the A8 in comparison to this bike is the AQ177 has a normal seat post and like a normal looking seat. The A8 does not have like a normal looking seat post or a normal looking seat at all. I don't know if it's comfortable or not. It looks kind of wonky to me. And obviously it's not like a standard kind of swap out seat post. So if you did want to change it, that might be difficult. On the AQ177, everything's normal. You can swap the seat out for whatever you want or a different seat post if you wanted, you know, a suspension seat post. But like I was saying, ride quality. It's got that rear suspension on here. And it really makes, you know, a huge difference on these moped -y style bikes, like going over these little, this rough patch in the pavement here. This bike feels perfectly cushy and good. I feel like I could be on this bike for a long time. So let's talk about the throttle a little bit. I like that it's thick and I like the rubber grips on it. Uh, let's see how much dead band there is. So it, it kicks in, you know, a decent amount into the throttle. The whole thing, you rotate about a quarter, quarter of the twist of the throttle for full activation. Um, it's better than some of the bikes I review. You do get like a decent amount of like turn in, in that throttle. So it's not like 100% like an on-off switch. Now, you know, I have seen better throttles, but this one's not bad. I love that it's the full length of the actual hand grip. So like, you know, if you're just relying on throttle a lot, which I'm gonna do with this bike, I'm not gonna be pedaling this thing much. It just weighs too much. I don't really like those little quarter twist throttles. Uh, it just makes your hand get sore. It makes my hand get sore anyway. This is way more convenient. Going into a headwind, let's see if the speedometer reads accurate with the GPS. So this is showing 23. 25 26 on there 27 on here 25 here so there is a small discrepancy 27 28 but yeah 28 on there 25 on here and another beautiful day here at the beach we'll see if it can get out on the sand a little bit i kind of doubt it but we're gonna try it it's just a very heavy bike oh man so what kind of lag is there on the cadence sensor? Let's find out. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. And it kicks on in full force on Telesis 5. There's not much of a ramp up at all. Uh, not pedaling, pedaling, power. I guess there's a little bit of a ramp up. 
So pretty decent response on the cadence sensor. And it does, gives you a little bit of a ramp up and yeah, it feels pretty powerful. <laughs> I can just about guarantee you this bike will not be able to climb that sandy hill. We're gonna get it out on flat sand and see if it can do flat sand. To talk a little bit more about comfort on this bike, um, it's nice man like i like my knees have like plenty of room to you know they can kind of come in kind of come out i can pedal if i want it's gonna be a little bit awkward to pedal this bike though you know it's moped style bike that's just how that's part of the deal for moped style bikes so handling it's a heavy bike for sure uh there's really just no way around a hundred and what ten ish pound bike it's just a little lethargic it's fine, you know, but just know it's not going to be like a nimble feeling kind of bike, despite the 20-inch wheels, which are usually, you know, relatively nimble. So far, so good, man. This bike, this seems like a really fun one to, to be whipping around on. Quick little range update. We are 5.5 miles in this ride. It's showing 53 volts. According to a lithium-ion battery chart, 53 volts is about 90% charge. It's the bike thief. What's he up to today? Well, let's see how it does riding on the boardwalk. Uh, not bad at all, really. I better go all the gears down full throttle. Oh no, oh no. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, probably not gonna be your first option for like off-roading. Like in, in loose pack sand anyway. All right, dudes, I'm determined. I'm gonna crank this thing up. Uh, raise the seat up a little bit so I can help it, help it pedal a little bit. Whoa. Downshift, downshift. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Nah, man, there's no way. Most, most of them I can kind of get to go out there, but. Uh, this one's kind of more of a long range one. It has like a huge battery on it, so. It, it can go like over 100 miles range, so it's just a little too heavy for out there. All right, let's turn off here and go try this hill. I'll leave it on pedal assist five and downshift to one. A little bit of a roll out here. Uh, we'll do throttle only. It's holding nine, nine and a half, ten miles an hour according to this display. Just fine, throttle only, no pedal. I weigh 200 pounds. And here's the hill we just went up. We got Hercules. <laughs> Cruise control is nice. All right, you know what time it is? We're gonna do the California incline. It's a 12% grade and we'll climb 85 vertical feet. So we're gonna roll in on pedal assist five, gear number four, full throttle now. And we have an obstacle brakes we gotta try these brakes in just a moment and full throttle back on it here so it's reading out 10 miles an hour here we'll check our range here at the top our battery voltage i had to give it a little blip of the throttle there let off it does fine climbing hills um, but once you get it you know like out on the sand so the bike has like good torque but like the weight of it I think it kind of holds it back in the sand, but you know, hills, it does just fine. And of course that was with no pedaling and we were just down there. Another absolutely beautiful day here in Los Angeles. 50 minutes into this ride, 9.6 miles. Battery voltage is reading out 52.4. According to the chart, that's about 85% on the battery. So hydraulic brakes going down this hill they're strong, they're good. Give it a quick little brake test here from 20. Full brake. <laughs> Pretty solid brakes, really. I mean, they're not bad at all. They're hydraulic, really. I mean, you can just feel this thing as a unit. You can feel like all that mass getting pulled to a stop. Brake levers are fine. You know, they're hydraulic, so they feel smooth. They're from DY Island. I like that it has like extra thick rotors on there so it can really uh, dissipate that heat because that, that's really what you're doing with brake pads. You're converting your kinetic energy into heat. And those rotors, they need to be able to absorb the heat and dissipate the heat. We'll give it one more brake test here from about 20. We're at 20 according to here. And brakes. <laughs> 
Yeah, man, they're they're legit, dude. These are fine. I mean, you can see it's laying down rubber. Big four inch wide tires. They have a lot of contact patch with the ground. Brakes are good. So final thoughts on the Anioki AQ177. I mean, this thing's obviously a monster on range. So if that's what you're looking for, something comfortable long range, I'd say go for it. For this price point, 1800 bucks while it's on sale. If you click the link below this video, you can grab one and also help support my reviews here on this channel. But let's head on home and see what the final voltage is on the battery when we get home and what kind of range we can actually expect out of this bike. Oh no, I have a flat tire. Gosh darn it. There you have it. Do you guys do uh, flat tire repair here? Well, that's Okay. Yeah. Like this way. Right down there. You yeah. think? Okay. Yeah. Well, at least it's only a 1.1 mile walk and I'm not at the top of the Hollywood sign. Like last time I got a flat tire on one of these things. Man, you think I learned my lesson. Nothing like walking your bike down the PCH. You can bring it down to the next door. The mechanic is right in there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we have this tube actually. Okay. Yeah, it's like 30 bucks or something, 25 bucks later. It's actually holding air a little bit. I need to get 200 miles of range on this. Wow. Okay. Big sign, a small sign. Perfect, perfect. Do you guys do Apple Pay? I hope. All right, $28.04 later, got a pump and some tire sealant. So shop here in Santa Monica, hooked it up big time. We're gonna try and get on home. I'm gonna top it off with the good pump. We can call this the good pump. Please hold air, please hold air, please hold air. Dude, there is something wrong with this inner tube for sure. Like it is like feeling wonky. Hopefully we can make it home though. Dude, is that a gas powered scooter? Look. Oh, there's two people on this thing. Do you guys have a pump I could use to top off this tire? Yeah, you have to turn around right there. Yeah, this thing's like not beaded on there right or something. Gotta go, man. Can't believe this thing is holding air still. It's like totally cool, man. So I'm rolling up on 18.4 miles. I walked about a mile of that probably. And the very dimly lit display is showing five out of five bars, but 51.4 volts. And according to the voltage chart for a 48 volt battery, 51.5 volts is 80% remaining on the battery. So assuming we only use about 20% of the battery today, 18 times five comes out to 90 miles. So can you actually hit 90 miles? I don't know for sure, but this battery is massive and you could certainly get some huge range out of this thing. So that tire's looking pretty low. I gotta get inside and change it. If you do wanna grab this bike, click the link below this video order through that link down there it would help support my reviews on this channel but if this is not the kind of bike you're looking for you can go ahead and watch this video next thanks for watching guys catch you next time any are yoki any are yoki and not so much